Hey guys, welcome back to Magic TV. My name's Craig, it's nine o'clock, it's time for another video. Now today, I'm going to be back with another of the three best trick series. It's been a while since I've done one of these, and this one is three more self-working tricks that you've never seen before. Three self-working card tricks that you've never seen before. These are some of the most popular videos on the channel. Um, what I'm going to do is highlight to you three self-working card tricks uh, there's a very good chance that you might not have seen these before, and I'm going to tell you where you can learn them. Well, I'm going to tell you where you can learn two of them. One of them, I've got no idea, and I'm hoping you guys can help me with that. But here it is, uh, three more self-working card tricks that you've never seen before. For everybody who's been asking a follow-up for the original video, here it is. Let's get started with the first trick. So this is a very old Leonard Green trick that has been around since time began. And um, I'm not 100% sure where it was published. Maybe somebody could tell me. Uh, but I know for a fact it is definitely Leonard Green. And you don't think of Leonard Green when, it th when you think of this type of magic. Because when you think of Leonard Green, you think of very complicated sleight of hand. And you think of incredible visuals. You know, it's well known that uh, some of his magic and his sleight of hand is just second to none. In f but this is completely self-working. There's no skill to it at all. And not only that, it's a really fun routine to perform. And there's a lot of big advantages. Now, I'm going to go into the advantages in a second. But first of all, I'd like to show you a performance of this. So here it is. This is a performance of the routine. I'm going to perform it for you. And then after I've performed it, I'll go through why it's so good. So Wayne, I'm going to show you something and it's all about my favourite number, my lucky number, my lucky number's 13. Okay, the cards are shuffled. 13 has always been my lucky number. Uh, it's unlucky for a lot of people, it's lucky for me, mainly because I do a lot with playing cards. And there's 13 cards, uh, there's 13 cards in each suit, you know, 13 values, ace, three to king. Um, and, and I'm going to show you the power of the number 13. Now before I do anything, I'm not going to touch the deck. Do you want to shuffle again or are you happy? No, I'm happy with that. Okay, I'm going to make a prediction. I've got a blank card here. I'm going to make a prediction. I'm going to write something on it. I want you to remember that I wrote this prediction before we even started the trick. Yeah? Okay. I'm going to fold it up. Put it right there. That's my prediction. Okay. So, um, as we're talking about 13, take 13 cards out of the deck, deal them face down onto the table, you can take them from anywhere you want. Anywhere I want. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we'll go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, we'll go right down there, 13. Come on. Come to check that, just one, two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, yep, 13. Perfect. Now, like I said, it's all about choices. Okay. Do you want to take any of those 13 cards out and switch them for any of those in the pack? Uh, no, I'm happy with that. Okay, so give the cards a shuffle. And in a minute, we're going to complete the circle of 13, which sounds ridiculous, but it'll all make sense in a minute. I want to uh, take the cards and take any three cards out and put them in a row on the table, but face down. Face down, okay. Um, we'll go for that one, uh, that one, and that one. Are you sure? Yeah, they're random. Okay, cool. Now, before we go on, turn those cards over. Again, it's all about choices, so at this point, if you want to, you can take any of those cards and switch it out for anything in the pack. Uh, no, they're good cards, I think they're sure? okay. So we're going to complete the circle of 13. And what that means is that we're going to take these cards here and deal cards face down onto them until we reach 13. So take the deck. This has a value of 8. Okay. So it would go 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. You see what we're doing yep. there? Now that is easy. That 13. is 13, so we don't do anything. This one, five, go right. for it. Uh, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Really impressive. I struggled with the high numbers. Okay. That was great. Um, so we've just completed the circle of 13, which is great. But when you think about this, each one of these cards has its own value as well. Let's add those up. 13 plus 8 is? 18. Uh, 13 plus 8 is 21. You said 18. That's the, that's the, that's, 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 that's I was about to say, that's yeah. the position of that card in the Monaco, so that's impressive. Um, <laughs> 13 plus 8 is, is 21. 21 plus 5 is 26. 26. So I want to pick up the cards and deal 25 cards onto the table. Uh, 25 cards? Yeah, 25. Okay. So the 26 is left. Uh, okay, so uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. And the 26 one there. 
Okay. Cool. So think about this for a minute. You shuffled. I haven't touched the cards at all. You took any 13 cards out. Yep. You could have switched them out again if you wanted to. Out of those, you took any three that you wanted to. And at that point, you could have changed them again. We completed the circle of 13, but I haven't done anything. You've shuffled. You've done everything. I haven't even touched the cards. That's the 26th card that you arrived at randomly. Because if that had been a 10, that would have been a different card. If that had been an eight, uh, 5, that had been a different card. Yeah. Let's have a look at the card. The Two of Clubs. And before I even started the trick at the very, very beginning, I wrote something down on that piece of card, didn't I? Yeah. You ended up on the Two of Clubs. Open up that piece of card and read it. <laughs> the two no way. of clubs. That's amazing. Power of thirteen, Will. That's brilliant. That's amazing. And they're all they're all different. Yeah, it's, it's just normal a normal deck. shuffle decking card. That's amazing. You. Not a clue. No, me neither. If you work it out, let me know. <laughs> That's great. So basically, when you actually think about it, this trick is a prediction of a selected playing card. Somebody is going to pick a card and they are going to um, have it found, you know, that's it. Or you're going to predict ahead of time what the card is going to be that they're going to pick. So in that respect, it's very simple. You know, you could achieve the same thing with a riffle force, right? But what makes this so mind boggling is the fact that it feels so fair. Because if you think about the sequence that you saw there, the cards are shuffled by the spectator. There's no ambiguity. They really are shuffled by the spectator. You make the prediction at the very, very beginning. You don't touch the deck at all. At any point do you actually need to touch the deck, which is an incredible, uh, when you think about it, that you can do this whole routine without even not needing to touch the deck of cards. Um, they, they, can, they can take you know, the cards from any point that they want to. Those 13 cards, they shuffle those. They take any three. They can change those three for anywhere in the deck if they want to. Like, there's so many options available to them. And then eventually, you know, the, the number that they come up with, you've predicted what the card is going to be at that number right from the very beginning. Um, with this sort of trick, it's kind of procedural. There's a lot going on. So when you're doing this sort of uh, this sort of trick, you have to highlight the positives and 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 kind of eliminate the negatives. So the positives, how free it is, and how many options they have, and how many choices they have, and and how many times they can shuffle and they can make a choice of which card they're going to use, and so on and so forth. The negative. Uh, that you kind of have to move away from is the fact that there is a lot of procedure. Like in reality, if you could actually do this, what you would do is you would just have them take a card out of the deck and you would show them that you've predicted that card, right? Now, that's kind of impossible. But... Um, uh, it's possible with this, but you have to hide the procedure. Or not so much hide the procedure, but you have to actually kind of justify the procedure. So the whole thing about, hey, do you have a lucky number? My lucky number's 13. We're going to try and do something with that lucky number. We're going to complete the circle of 13. All the little presentational points that I use there, they're very important because it kind of allows you to justify the procedure that you're actually going through with this. And as long as you can justify this procedure, then... In reality, this is a bit of a miracle because you're written down the name of a card at the very beginning and it's the card that ultimately they are going to find from a shuffled deck of cards that you haven't touched. And by the way, this is a shuffled deck of cards. There are no gimmicks, there are no extras. You could go into a shop, buy a brand new deck, have them open it, have them shuffle it. You would never touch the cards and you'd still be able to do this trick. So in that regard, it's amazing, and it really is. And one of the best places to use this, not that I'm really a big fan of magician foolers, but this is a bit of a magician fooler. If a magician does not know the method behind this trick and you show it them in a sessioning environment or a convention or somewhere like that, it's going to confuse the hell out of them because it is a... It's one of those tricks that just doesn't make any sense. But from a practicality point of view, it's really practical. It's an instant reset. Of course, it's an instant reset set because it's a borrowed shuffle deck of cards in use there's no gimmicks there's no extras there's no setup there's no sleight of hand there's no skill you don't even need to touch the cards so as long as you can justify that um that procedure that comes with the trick which is the same sort of thing that you need to do with a lot of self-working magic to be honest but as long as you can justify that procedure then you have kind of a miracle on your hands here and and, and look it up 
as I say, it's by Leonard Green. I'll see if I can find the source for you, but look it up. And if you do do it, let me know in the comments what you, uh, what you think, because the reactions that it gets for me from lay people when I perform it, and I don't do it all the time. It's one of those pipe and slippers tricks where you've done the set that you've done through the course of the evening and you're just about to leave and you sit down to do one more thing. And this is maybe the sort of thing that you'd do. Uh, but it's great. It's the first self-working trick that I wanted to talk to you about. So it's the first self-working trick that you've never seen before. And now we're going to move on with trick number two. So the second trick that you've uh, you've probably never seen before is another um, is another great trick that requires a very small setup. Although, in all honesty, with you, there are ways of doing this with no setup whatsoever. But it's a very strong uh, effect, and um, it's got one of those kicker endings that people just don't see coming because they think that something is happening. And and when it that when when they actually get to the end of the trick and they think the trick's over, something else happens in its place. And 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 those are always the best types when there's that kicker ending. They think that the trick's finished and then there's something else. That's always, for my opinion, anyway. When when the, 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 that's always the best moment, if that makes sense. Uh, but I'm going to perform it for you right now, so you can have a look at it. This is the second routine. Now, before I go into it, I should tell you this is the one where I don't actually know where it's from. I was shown this at a convention. Of a few years ago now and it's one of those ones that uh, uh, you know when I'm talking to people about self-working magic I'll go hey have you seen this one this is a pretty fun trick but uh, the guy that showed it me didn't know where he learned it from either so any help would be gratefully appreciated with this if you know the source behind this I mean obviously I know you know it might just be somebody's um, take on the down under deal or something like that I'm not too sure but let me know if you know where, uh, where where this trick comes from. So Wayne, I'm going to show you a trick with a pack of cards, okay? Yep. So do me a favor, first of all, just cut the cards any way you want to. I will go there. I'm going to complete the cards. And this is a demonstration in coincidence. This is crazy, but you're going to make all the choices. It's very important you realize you make all the choices. Okay. And the first choice is where you are going to pick, which is here. And we're going to take uh, six cards. One, two, three, four, five, six. And what we're going to do is we're going to, without knowing what those cards are, we're going to set one of them at random. Uh, name a number between one and six for me. Uh, let's go four. Four, you sure? Yep. Positive? Yep. So that would be one, two, three, four. That would be that one. Okay? okay. Now, whatever the value of that card is, we're going to use that value and we're going to spell to it with this packet over and over again, eliminating, eliminating cards until we're down to one. Okay. So if this was uh, a four, for example, we'd spell four over and over again. As it is, it's a seven. Okay. Okay, so hopefully you can spell to seven. I'm sure you can. I think so. Good. So here's how it goes. Watch. I'm not going to change the order. I'm going to take the cards exactly from where you want it. I'm going to spell seven. So S, E, V, E, N. That goes down there. Yep. Now we do it again. S, E, V, E, N. That goes down there. Yep. The next one. S, E, V, E, N. That one goes down there. Yep. Next one. S, E, V, E, E, N. That one goes down there, which leaves us with this one. Now think about this. You cut. You decided where in the pack we would go to. You then gave me any number. You picked a card. If you'd picked me a different number, it would have been a different card. We then eliminated the cards. We didn't change the order. We ended up right here. I said this was a demonstration of coincidence, and I think it's a real coincidence <laughs> that we ended up on the other black seven. Nice. Because I understand how that works. What I don't understand, Wayne, is how these end up being the one, two, three four aces beautiful lovely there you go very nice so there you go that's the routine now what's really nice about this is it feels very very fair if you do have the deck set up to begin with it's a very simple six card setup that you can do in literally about 10 seconds but to be honest if you don't want to do the setup you can literally just go through the deck and say hey i'm going to take six cards out for this uh, it doesn't really matter what the six cards are. I'm going to take this one, this one, this one, this one, this one. And you can openly take six cards out, put them face down on the table and go into the routine. I do prefer, however, having the six cards apparently chosen out of the deck because I feel that that makes it a little bit stronger. And I think there's a, it adds a little bit to it. So 
I, I go to the trouble of having the six cards set up. But even though I go to the trouble of having the six cards set up, I can do this on the fly, literally within seconds. Now, in the previous trick that I went through with you, um, it has to be a deck of 52 playing cards. If there's one card less in the deck, it's not going to work. But with this trick, that's not the case. With this trick, you don't need a full pack of cards. It doesn't even need to have anywhere near a full pack of cards. As long as you have the cards that you need to do this trick, then that's absolutely fine. Um... The trick, obviously, is completely self-working. And I love the amount of choices that you have in there. You know, they choose the number from one to six. They feel like they've had a free choice of card. It's a completely free choice of number. Then they can do the deal. You don't need to do it themselves. And then, you know, they get that, uh, you get that matchup with the two sevens, which is a really nice moment, by the way. But then just when they think the trick's over, you've got the four aces. Now, what's really nice is you can actually put the four aces away at that point and just use the two sevens and do into a sandwich routine or you've got the four aces so you can go into any other four of a kind trick that you want to there's lots of different options there that are open to you and the other thing is if you use a blank pack of cards and you just have those seven cards in the blank deck you can actually have a situation at the end where all the other cards turn blank now you might consider that to be overkill and i've tried it a couple of times and it really does get a good reaction so you know there's lots of different ways and lots of different options that you can go with this trick it's very very easy to do and um you'd think that the, with just with a choice of six cards it would mean that um you know it's not as impressive but honestly because they feel like they could have took those six cards from anywhere in the deck it actually becomes even more impressive there's no table required with this one you can do it walk around you can do it mix and mingle if you want to um and it's an instant reset because you just drop those cards on top of the deck and you're ready to do it again or you're left with a regular deck to do whatever you want to there's no angle issues to speak of there's no pocket management you don't need anything else there's no gimmicks in the deck there's no extras or anything like that it literally is just those six cards so it's a super Super fun trick to perform, but I've left the best till last, and we're going to perform that final trick for you right now. So the final trick um, that I'm going to be talking to you about is by Andy Nyman. Now, we know Andy Nyman is one of the greatest magicians, mentalists, consultants, um, creators, innovators. Um, pick a word. If it's associated to the magic industry, um, then it'll probably uh, describe Andy Nyman. He's amazing, incredible actor. His son, Preston, is making waves for himself as well. Just an, a really nice guy, you know, co-organises the London Magic Convention. I can't say enough great things about Andy Nyman. Um, this is from Andy Nyman's latest lecture. This is his version of Brainwave. Now, if you buy his lecture notes, if you want to learn this, you're going to have to learn them from Andy's lecture notes. Now, I, unfortunately, I was so busy at Blackpool, I didn't get a chance to go to his lecture. However, uh, a few weeks ago, he lectured at the YMC at the Young Magicians Club and uh, Ryland watched his lecture and loved every second of it and bought his lecture notes and then fooled me with this trick. And um, and then and luckily let me look at his lecture notes so I could learn it myself. And instantly it became one of my favorite self-working tricks of all time. This trick has everything. It's easy to do. Um, it's the it's a version of Brainwave, but with a regular deck of cards. Uh, it feels really fair in the in the actual um, lecture notes, in the write up to the lecture notes. Andy talks about he doesn't create many card tricks, but this is one of the routines that he's most proud of creating. And I can understand why, because basically what we have here is a version of Brainwave with no gimmicks at all. If you feel, in, if you seem, you know, if, you, if that sounds intriguing to you, you're going to see a performance of that. Let's have a look at this right now. So Wayne, I'm going to show you something. I've got two decks of cards here. Yep. Uh, one is a prediction, this one here. That's going to become important later on. This is the actual deck. Open it up for me and give them a shuffle. Make sure they're all mixed up. Any kind of shuffle? Uh, it's up to you. One-handed riffle shuffle idea. I can't do one-handed riffle shuffle, but I can do one of them. That's fine. That's fine. That's great. You just give this deck a false cut. <laughs> no, <laughs> it no like... I gave it a couple of cuts. Oh, it, looked, it looked like a false cut. No. Like... Okay, fair enough. Um, you're happy, yeah? Yep. Uh, this is kind of a really strange thing, and you'll see why. Take the deck for me and hold it uh, in dealing grip, but face down. Yep. Right. I want you to deal a few cards off the top to the table, just a couple. It's up to you, however many. Like that? Yeah, it's fine. And some for the middle? Uh, some for the middle, so let's go that one, that one, that one. Yeah, do that. Okay, and some for the bottom? Uh, let's go uh, there. 
Are you happy? Yep. Now we're going to further randomise things by taking one of these out from the middle and putting it back. Okay, I'll go for this one here. Okay. Anywhere? Yeah. Perfect. Now square up those. You decided, if you shuffled, yep. you decided how many cards to take. You decided where to take them from. Um, if you took them from different places, this would have been a completely different mix of cards. And I don't even know how many are there right now. Can you, can you dip, count? Uh, so we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Perfect. Now, no one can know what that top card is. No. Nope. Because obviously you were taking cards from all over the place. Yep. So turn it face up. Jack of diamonds. Jack of diamonds. And put it face up over there on top of the packet. And then put the rest on top. That's fair. You yep. shuffled. You took cards from all over the place. I couldn't have predicted how many cards there would be or the card that you would end up on. But I did put a prediction here from the very beginning. Do you remember? Yep. Uh, this red deck, I'm going to hold in deal and grip. You're going to hold yours in deal and grip. And we're just going to deal. Okay. At the same time, in unison. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. <laughs> oh my God, look at that. We've both got a jack of diamonds face up in that exact position. Because I understand how this works. You know what I don't understand? Oh. And what's going to really confuse you later on isn't that I knew it would be the Jack of Diamonds. It's not that I knew where it would be. It's the fact that every other <laughs> card in this deck is blank That's and lovely. you can examine everything. That's wonderful. So how good is that trick? I mean, that trick is absolutely amazing. Think about this for a minute. It uses two decks of cards. The one deck of cards where the kind of the prediction is in is on display from the very, very beginning. The other deck is a regular shuffle deck of cards in use. You could be using it for any other routine that you want to use in your set. You could have used it to do your 75 phase ambushes card routine. Absolutely fine. No problem at all. When you want to go into this routine, you then just go into it whenever you want to. You have the deck shuffled, you take it back and you go into this routine and it feels really fair. But what I love about this is it's kind of like brainwave mixed with do as I do because they make all of the choices with this deck and 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 it feels really fair and they're dealing cards out and everything feels great and amazing and so on and so forth. But then you get yourself into this position and now you start dealing and, and it's this do as I do thing as you deal from this prediction deck that you've had from the very beginning and they deal from the deck that they've shuffled and they've done all of this stuff with. Now, boom, you show that not only do the cards match, but they're face up in exactly the same position. I mean, how powerful is that? Such a really powerful moment. And then you just show that every other card in your deck is blank. It's really great. It's a super strong trick that has gone straight into my set. In fact, it's one of the best tricks that I've seen this year. And if you if it was sold, you could easily sell this for, you know, like 30. This is a 30, 40 pound trick. And it's just one trick in a, a set of lecture notes that have a load of other tricks in them. And all of those tricks are really, really good. Um, I can't say enough good stuff about this. If you want to learn it, then you need to beg, borrow, or steal a copy of, um, um, of Andy's lecture notes because they really are great. It's one of the best lectures, uh, lecture notes I've seen. I want to go and see his lecture. I didn't see his lecture. Ryland told me it's one of the best lectures he's seen, but I've read his lecture notes, and so I can only imagine how good the lecture is. But this trick, it, you know, I mean, it's just got so many positives. It's instantly reset. It's examinable. How many versions of Brainwave do you know that's instantly reset and examinable? It's anytime, anywhere. It's got moments in there that are even better than the original Brainwave. I mean, there's just so much to love about this. I think it's great. And uh, it's your final self-working card trick that you've probably never seen before. So there you go, guys. That's another video in the bag. Do me a favor. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Now, you want to see more videos like this, you know what you got to do. You're just going to like the video, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment down below. I'm going to be back again soon with another video. In the meantime, don't forget that you can go and join the Netrix. Just go to www.thenetrix.com, www.thenetrix.com, and you can go and see what all the fuss is about. I'll see you again soon. Thank you so much for watching. My name's Craig from Magic TV. Mm.